In chapter two, we'll start exploring the periodic table and the ways elements are arranged in the table to give us clues about their composition and reactivity. We will not cover section 2.1 together, but it's a good idea to find the Concepts to Memorize handout under Course Details to become familiar with the shaded elements. You'll be responsible for knowing them in Gen Chem 1 and 2. Let's dive right into our first topics in section 2.2. The laws of chemical combination offer insights into how different elements form compounds. While the textbook only offers one learning goal, We've identified three specific learning outcomes for this material. The law of definite proportions, the law of conservation of mass, which we'll continue working with all semester, and the application of these laws to some simple calculations. Let's begin. During chemical reactions, matter is neither created nor destroyed, which was not known to the earliest generations of chemists. If you think about it, the ashes left from a campfire have much less mass than the wood that was burned, so it would be easy to believe the matter was destroyed. However, Antoine Lavoisier demonstrated that the ignition of phosphorus using a focused sunbeam in a humid sealed container showed zero mass loss, confirming that the materials were not lost but transformed from one form oxygen gas and solid phosphorus, to another, solid phosphorus oxide. This quantitative experiment led other scientists to carry out experiments to confirm his conclusions. Next, the law of definite proportions notes any given compound is composed of definite proportions by mass of its constituent elements. For example, in all samples of pure water, the mass ratio of oxygen to hydrogen is 8 to 1. We can also talk about the percent by mass of an element by multiplying the proportion by 100%. Let's look at an example. If we consider a 342 gram sample of sucrose, we can calculate the mass of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen present. Carbon has a mass of 144 grams, divided by the total sample mass to get a carbon to sucrose ratio of 0.421. If we multiply that ratio by 100%, we see that sucrose is 42.1% carbon by mass. Repeating the process for hydrogen and oxygen, the percentages will add up to 100 if we've done our math right. A 4.33 gram sample of dinitrogen monoxide N2O is composed of 63.65% nitrogen and 36.35% oxygen by mass. How much nitrogen is present in a 14.9 gram sample of N2O? To get the answer, we change the percentage to a decimal and multiply it by the mass to get 9.48 grams nitrogen. What about the next question? All pure samples of N2O have the same percent composition, 63.65% nitrogen and 36.35% oxygen by mass. All pure samples of NO have the same percent composition, 46.68% nitrogen and 53.32% oxygen. A mixture of dinitrogen monoxide and nitrogen monoxide must have a percentage by mass of nitrogen between 46.68% and 63.65%. Calculate the mass of nitrogen in a 4.75 gram sample of nitrogen monoxide, NO, which has a percent composition of 46.68% nitrogen and 53.32% oxygen by mass. To do this, we need to rearrange the equation for percent by mass to solve for the mass of the element. The mass of the element equals percent by mass divided by 100% times the mass of the sample. 
Therefore, the mass of nitrogen equals 46.68% divided by 100% multiplied by 4.75 grams to get 2.22 grams nitrogen. Finally, we can talk about the law of multiple proportions, which does not get a lot of airtime after chapter 2, but does lay the foundation for more advanced concepts. The law of multiple proportions states that for any two or more compounds that are composed of the same elements, for a given mass of one of the elements, the ratio of the masses of any other element in the compounds is a small whole number ratio. For example, in carbon monoxide, CO, for every one gram of carbon present, there are 1.33 grams of oxygen. If we add more oxygen to the compound to make carbon dioxide, CO2, now we'll have 2.66 grams of oxygen for every one gram of carbon. A comparison shows us that, by mass, carbon dioxide will have two oxygens for every one oxygen in carbon monoxide, a fact that's noted in the chemical formula by the subscripts. Let's try this for another set of compounds where one of the masses is not set to one gram. A sample of nitrogen monoxide, NO, consists of 14.01 grams of nitrogen and 16.00 grams of oxygen, whereas a sample of nitrogen dioxide, NO2, consists of 14.01 grams of nitrogen and 32.00 grams of oxygen. Show that NO and NO2 follow the law of multiple proportions. We'll start by calculating the N to O ratio for both compounds. Now, compare the two ratios by dividing the larger by the smaller number. The ratio of nitrogen to oxygen mass ratios for these compounds is a whole number following the law of multiple proportions. As always, I'll leave you with the parting thoughts of the authors.